I'm Joyce Meyer. I've seen God's power transform my own life, and He will do it for you. This is going to be so much fun because today you're invited to a party for Joyce. When our birthdays roll around, and especially those milestone ones, we tend to look back on our lives and think about all we've learned and what comes next. Well, Joyce recently celebrated her 80th birthday. So the Talk It Out podcast crew took the opportunity to pick her brain. It was a great chance for all of us to learn a lot. So come join the party. Today is a celebration, so come on in here for Joyce's birthday party. Yay! It's my birthday. Yay! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. We Fine. threatened that we were going to sing. I finally but... made it to 30. Isn't that yeah. wonderful? You look great. Waiting. You look so good. You do. I guess you didn't want our song. I know. I'm shocked. Oh, you can sing. Go ahead. Are you ready? I want you to She said no. <laughs> no I don't actually the wanna... world. Happy birthday to Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> that was very Marilyn Monroe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> then it then it spirit fingers. Then, yeah, jazz dance. Joyce, is there that jazz? Really I like it wasn't too bad. It wasn't Thank bad you. at all. Yeah. You did good. Joyce Meyer said I could sing now. Did you hear that just now? <laughs> yeah, she said she doesn't sing, have her she hearing aid in. <laughs> She said, not that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> well, this is a big birthday for you. Yeah. 80. Wow. It's amazing. I'm an octogenarian. It is amazing. Octogenarian. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath your name, yeah. Joyce Meyer, octogenarian. I never heard that, that word until I got it. Join the club. So do not feel like I'm eighty. You don't look no. it either. No. You don't, don't act mm. it, like. At well, all. I don't really feel it, you know. And we, I wrote that book called what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a little problem with my memory now. <laughs> yeah. Aging without getting old. Aging, aging without, without getting, getting old. Yeah. yeah. And how age really is just a number, but old is a mindset. Ooh, it's yeah. like, and so I just, because I don't think I'm 80. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I am, but I don't, I don't go around thinking like that. Mm -hmm. And I still am so active and you know, do so much yeah. that I'm You not, and Dave both. I mean, mm -hmm. when I think about what my parents were like at this age, it's like, you got to mm -hmm. be kidding. Is that uh, strange to think about? Like, Oh, yeah, because they were just in such bad shape. I mean, they were both on walkers and just scooting around. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty funny. I went in a, a dress shop and when I was in Florida recently, and I came out of there and I said, well, everything in there is for old people. <laughs> 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 and then I, I came so out and I thought, oh, I guess 21. that meant it was for me. <laughs> I didn't care for it much, so. Well, I think there is so much that we can all learn, actually. Yeah. So we just all want to ask you a bunch of questions okay. today. You know, just figuring out what this aging process <laughs> can be. I think the first thing I really have on my heart to share with people, I feel like there's a lot of people watching today that just... They're too caught up in the number mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. of their age. Sure. Yeah. And they're assuming that, well, because I'm 72 or 75 or 65 or whatever, I, ca I can't do that. But the truth is, is you're never too young and you're never mm -hmm. too old to do what God tells you to do. Yeah. And the main thing that God wants us to do is to be a blessing to each other and to help each other. You know, I help through teaching the Word of God and lots of other things that I do personally. But um, Dick Van Dyke, who's in his late 90s, I heard him say that there's two things you have to have when you get old if you want to be happy, and that's a purpose mm -hmm. and somebody to love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that people are making a big mistake if they lose their purpose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as what I've learned, I mean, what haven't I learned? <laughs> I, I said earlier, I've learned how to be a human being, for one thing. And uh, when I think about where I started, just everything that's happened over the, mm -hmm. the years, you know, years go by fast. Yeah. I mean, they, the amount of years that we live is just nothing compared to 
eternity. Mm -hmm. And I know when you're 20, you think you've got forever, but you'll be 40 before you know it, and then you'll be 50 and then 60. And it's, 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 really, it's really wise to make good use of your time. Yeah. But what does it say in Psalms? Help number my days, you know, that I walk in wisdom. I'm, I'm not quoting it accurately, but he's, he's really talking about, you know, thinking about what you're doing and what yeah. you're spending yeah. your time doing and not wasting your time because yeah. you don't, none of us have as much time as we think we do. But I mean, God has healed me from so many things and taught me so many things. And I've got four wonderful children and 12 grandchildren and sixth great grandchild <laughs> going to be born here in just hmm. a couple weeks. And <laughs> it's, um, God's blessed me. Yeah. yeah. Really blessed me. I, I think of the scripture as you're talking, this isn't the one you're talking about, but I love this scripture. It says, it's Psalm 27, four. It says, one thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And yeah. it, it's all the days. It's not like, yeah. you know, I'm going to do this while I'm in the prime of my life yeah, and then I'm going to exactly. take it easy right, and, yeah. and not not think about that anymore. It just mm -hmm. God always has something for us to do and he right. always has beauty for us in our life. Right. I've been talking a lot lately about experience mm -hmm. and how you only can get experience by going through things. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not something that can you can just pray for or right. somebody can give you as a gift in a box. You have mm -hmm. to you have to have your own walk with God mm -hmm. and your own experience with God. Mm -hmm. And the more you go through things and you see that God is faithful, the less you have to worry the next time yeah. right. about what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get 40, 45 years behind you in a relationship with God, things get so much easier because really trusting God is the key to everything in life. Mm -hmm. It's like there's so much bad stuff going on right now in the world, and mm -hmm. that's all anybody wants to talk about is how bad it is and all the negativity, and it's hopeless. And But God is still God, you know, and He still is going to take care of his people and do what needs to be done. And we're, we're the ones that need to stay positive mm -hmm. and hopeful. And I love what it says in Peter. It says we're born again into an ever-living hope. Yeah. No matter how bad situations are in the world, we always have hope. But you can't, you don't, you just, you can't have that kind of faith without going through things, hard things, mm -hmm. and seeing the faithfulness of God. And I think the other thing that happens as you get older is you learn what's important and what's not. Yeah. I've had several people say to me recently, you know, now that I've gotten a little bit older, I realize what a waste of time it was to get mad about that mm -hmm. or yeah. what a, how foolish it was to get upset over that thing. Mm -hmm. And you, you get a lot more peaceful. Yeah as you get older, mm -hmm. because you realize that so many things are petty compared to eternity <laughs> and how much time we waste yeah. being upset over things we can't do anything about. You know what, though? That's really a choice mm -hmm. to do that, because yeah. there are also many people who get more fearful as they get right. older, yeah. Yeah. because yeah. you know their body's changing, and they don't know what the future mm -hmm. might hold. Yeah. And, and so I think what you're saying, making that choice... That is, it's really a great encouragement because it's going to go one way or the other, yeah. right? But having that experience does eliminate that. Somewhere along the line, did you decide this is how I will look at my past experiences and see God in them? Or because you could easily think that was so terrible. I've been through so many terrible things, more terrible things could happen. Well, I started yeah. out like that. Yeah, I mean, my attitude was Dave and I were married a few weeks, and he looked at me and said, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. And uh, he forgot that he prayed for somebody that needed help. He asked for it. When he wanted to get married. So he got exactly— <laughs> He asked for it. Was it was his own he, asking. He, he, yeah, that's what I tell you. He answered prayers. <laughs> he, he asked for this. Uh, and uh, he said, what's wrong with you? I, I was just being negative about something. He said, why are you so negative? 
And I'll never forget what I said to him. I said, well, if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you won't be disappointed mm-hmm. when it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Now, that's how negative I was. Wow. Mm-hmm. I had had so many disappointing things in my life that I did fall into that trap you're talking about, yeah. about just having what the Bible calls evil forebodings in Proverbs 15, 15, that all of our days are made unhappy and miserable through evil forebodings, so expecting something bad. But the Bible tells us to wait on God and put our hope in God, and if you study out the word wait on God, it actually means to expect something good to happen at any moment. So. You, you start out in life, at least I did, and I think most of you will say this, trying to solve my own problems. Yeah. You know, I said I trusted God, but I always wanted to have a backup plan. Mm-hmm. Just in case. Plan B. And, uh, I mean, I was very much like Abraham and Sarah. You know, this is taking too long, yeah. and so I've got a mm-hmm. good idea. Why don't you do this? And then I'd go do that, and that would be a mess and wouldn't work out. And... Uh, there's a scripture in Jeremiah that says, my people have committed two evils. They've dug for themselves wells that have no water in it, mm-hmm. and they've gone way too many days without yeah. seeking me. And I love that digging wells that have no water in them. It's like you work and work and work yeah. at something, and then it's like, well, this yeah, this isn't working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you either will... It is a choice because you either will drive yourself totally Mm -hmm. insane Mm -hmm. and just be worn out and miserable all the time trying to do things yourself. And most of us do reach a point where we just say, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And it's kind of like that surrender point, I think, where you finally just— It's yours. But yeah, Yeah, it's it's God's. People— People reach it in different ways, mm-hmm. but we we try to be a good Christian on our own, mm-hmm. and you can't without God's help. Right. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Yeah. So, you know, I preach and I tell people how it can be, but I don't think that eliminates them going through <laughs> right yeah. through things mm-hmm. because the only way you're going to get that experience is to go through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For yourself. Well, and you're certainly still going through it. I mean, well, sure. I, I I love talking to Joyce about different things that are happening in her life because you you just have a, a good attitude about mm-hmm. most of it. Like she, is it okay if I share about your hearing aid? Yeah. She sure. re, she recently <laughs> got a hearing aid and she but called. Dave got two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, because you only got, got the one. Yeah, yeah, I only got one. Uh-huh. Therefore, Let's we know clear. whose hearing is worse. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> She called and she said, I can hear everything. She said, I can hear my hair sizzle when I curl my hair. (laughs) (laughs) It's just adjusting to new things in life. You can either be really upset about those kind of things, or you can say, you know, thank you, God, that there's an answer for this issue that I'm Mm -hmm. dealing with. A good attitude is so, so, so important. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear that little phrase, your attitude determines your altitude, but it really is right. A good attitude really determines how far you're going to go in life, and it determines your joy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it even determines how many friends you're going to have and what mm-hmm. kind of friends you're going to have. Nobody wants to be around somebody that's just negative all the time and just always sour about everything. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't do any good. I love to surround myself with people that are doing what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, at an early age, I knew that I know that I have a, there's a purpose in my life. Like mm-hmm. there's God has called me to do something, mm-hmm. something not little, something big. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I I knew if I stayed in my little circle of people that had small minds and everyone was mm-hmm. when they got a diagnosis or when they got they, you know, just fell apart, then mm-hmm. I knew that I would stay in that mindset, that mm-hmm. small mindset. So like the the importance of putting people around you that are doing better than you is is something that I think a lot of younger people need to really grasp onto. Yeah, like, all of us. We I, need yeah, inspiration. Like, I, we need insp- we need someone that I like to surround myself with people that are doing what, I, what not what I want to do, but doing like great things that right. are following their purpose. And so that I just want to say thank you to you because I've seen you go through so many things, and I've like you you never complain about it, and mm-hmm. you kind of like 
big things. I was just watching one of the episodes that we had done before and, and you were talking about, yeah, I have to have cataract surgery. You just kind of like, and you just like shrug <laughs> yeah, your shoulders. I'm like, <laughs> like, so like, I mean, it's, it's it, because a lot of times people believe that because you do what you do, that, that you it, don't have any problems. That you don't have any problems. Yeah. Like, it's like, no, problems still come. Actually, like, sometimes you have more because the devil hates you and he comes yeah. after you and tries to. Mm -hmm. I think different people, too, have different areas of life where the enemy attacks them. Yes. For me, it's always been physical stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, somebody else, it might be financial or somebody else, it might be their marriage, you know, sure. that the enemy will come after. But uh, for me, it's always been physical, but it's never. Mm -hmm. God always gives me the grace. Mm -hmm. It's like Paul and his thorn in the flesh. Yep. God said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Mm -hmm. And so who knows? I don't, you know, I don't know why I've gone through as many physical things as I have. I know it doesn't mean that I don't have any faith because you have to have faith to go through those yep. things. Yeah. And it's... <laughs> I told the Lord one time, I feel like I'm put together with spit and glue. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> a little duct tape, you can do wonderful just, things. Just a little crazy glue. Yeah. Keep it on top of hand. But I, I, I work out with a trainer still three days a week. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm doing conferences. That's some strong glue. Yeah, doing yeah. Really, really some really, really good spit. TV and, uh, <laughs> you know, you're talking about like how I face things. And one of the things that I've learned is if you take life one day at a time, mm -hmm. you can pretty much handle anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because God only gives you grace one day at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just like he gave the Israelites the manna one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And That's if they good. tried to gather more, it would stink and mm -hmm. get rotten. And so it's kind of amusing. Some people say, you know, my life stinks. Well, maybe it's because you're trying to gather tomorrow's manna <laughs> yeah. today. You know, yeah, you can't. Yeah. And i that's something that I was not able to do in the earlier years of my life. I wanted to have everything figured out. Mm. And, and I'm still a planner, but I, you know, I've got some things coming up in the future. I need to have a sinus surgery in December. And, you know, we hadn't got to my nose. My nose, had never, <laughs> my nose had never been worked on, so now we're going to get to that. And, uh, <laughs> So, but you know what? It's like I always end up better off, and I'm I'm not going to worry about it till yeah. that day in December comes, and then I'll go. And they said you can't sneeze for two days, you can't do this and that. And I thought, how do you no, not I'm sneeze? Not I don't know, but I guess I'll just. Oh my goodness! Get all get all the feathers and everything away. I'll see what happens. Get it all out. <laughs> if, I ha if I have to sneeze, I guess I'll try to do it through my mouth. <laughs> Be rough for the glue, but <laughs> you can't you can't need some tissues around. <laughs> and, you know, people get they get so afraid when something's wrong, and yeah. it just you can it's do natural. whatever you yeah. need to do through Christ, who is your yeah. strength, mm -hmm. especially if you keep a good attitude about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's really it's our bad attitudes that make it a hundred percent mm -hmm. worse. So than what, what, what happens be. when you wake up? not feeling good, that bad attitude's creeping in, because it happens to all of us. So how do you turn that around so you don't sit in that all day long? Well, for me, a lot of times I'll just, first of all, I've learned if I really don't feel good, I'm kind of better off if I'm not around a ton of people. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Because yeah. I might not be as pleasant as I should be, mm -hmm. and um yeah, you know, I've learned to, sometimes for me, it's helpful if I just like work on a message or work on a book, Yeah, you know, something to put my mind into other than just how I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. And I do have days when I don't feel good and there's really no particular reason for it. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel good. But mm -hmm. Dave has taught me, because he's this way, he's like, if I don't feel good, I don't worry about it. I just rest. Hmm. And that's... You know, it's it's all of us trying to figure everything yeah, out yeah. <laughs> that makes it so bad. It's like, how simple is that, you know? Right. I have a really important question I'd like to ask you. If you could look back in in your years, which decade did you, did this stuff make sense to you? Like, did it start clicking? At what point did it click? Yeah, at what point did it click where it's, it's just not worth worrying about? Like, how many more years do I need to go to be like you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask it this yeah. way. Let's just what I mean is, is how much time I have for Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> well, 
it comes gradually in certain things, but mm -hmm. you're probably not going to like my answer. Great. But Appreciate your honesty. I would say that <laughs> probably in the last 10 years has been the best. So There's that means so uh, many left 70. to go. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. You're double my age. <laughs> that actually gives me hope, though. But see, when I was like in my mid-60s, I mm -hmm. was still going out of the country three times a year, mm -hmm. three weeks at a time, going overseas, jet lag, doing all, you know, all this stuff. And so I, God has given me supernatural strength yeah. and energy yeah, yeah. Absolutely. to do what he's called me to do. Mm -hmm. And like even things like when, when I, it was interesting because when it was time for me to stop going out of the country, I didn't want to stop because I loved those mission trips. Yeah. But I mean, nothing worked out. I mean, it was just like it. it hmm. I would have had to have been just plain stupid to not see that God was closing the door. Yeah, that's and true. And He didn't. God just started making it happen. I yeah. mean, our permits would get pulled at the last minute. Wow. I d just different things would happen. You know, mm -hmm. and we just couldn't. And before everything worked out, I mean, we had mm -hmm. such favor that it was amazing. We'd get into places that nobody else had been able to get into and do wow. things. But see, the good thing for me. And I really thank God for this is because I have a media ministry mm -hmm. and there's so many media outlets today, the devil can't keep me out of anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. really true. I can't physically go to India, yep. but I'm on television there mm -hmm. every day that's in amazing. 30 some odd languages. And so um, you, you have to be ready for change. The statement that I heard that really blessed me is, Anybody who thinks they can always do what they've always done is a fool. Wow, that's so good. Mm -hmm. And you just, everybody has mm -hmm. to be ready. And I, I, I kind of feel like it comes in decades. Mm -hmm. It seems like every decade you'll notice a change. Sure. And I don't know if it's mentally because, I don't know, somehow 58 or 59 doesn't sound as old as 60. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know. Ouch. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why'd you pick that one? <laughs> but she didn't say it was old. It was just older than 59. <laughs> the first thing that I can ever remember that, that kind of bothered me was when I had to go sign up for Medicare. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I can see why that one can hit different. AARP. <laughs> I thought, I, you start getting that AARP stuff at 55, but... Um, 65, I thought, I'm going to the Medicare office. And it just didn't seem realistic. It was right. like, yeah, yeah, you know, I got a Medicare card. Like, what am I doing you know, here? What am I, what am I doing? And Don't they know you're you only still 25? Feel 30, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. And then... You know, then I don't... Maybe 75, it was like, wow, I'm 75. No. You know, I can't believe I'm 80. It's like, <laughs> I don't... I, I just... That's why I say stuff like, Boy, all the clothes in there were for old people. <laughs> you know? our, our Dave will say, look at that old guy and the way he's driving. And I'm like, he's probably younger than you are, Dave. <laughs> but that's good. It's good if you, don't, good. if you don't sit around and think, oh, I'm 80 and I yep. can't do anything anymore. Yeah. And so it's going to be interesting to me mm -hmm. to see what all God lets me do before He's finished with me here. Yeah. <laughs> I love hearing that because it's just a reminder that none of us are finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because right. sometimes we think we're finished at so many different times in our yeah. life. It's like, I didn't get this job I wanted. I'm I'm just done. My career yeah. is over. <laughs> yeah. right. Or, you know, my marriage is yeah. now not what it yeah. was. And so it's over for me. Or yeah. I'm turning whatever age. Yeah. I've missed the opportunities. And you see God opening doors still for you mm -hmm. every right. day. Well, and, and the other good thing is, you know, God has provided some wonderful people to help me. I just had to be willing to let go of some things. Mm, that's, that's hard. Good. You know, Ginger's one of those people. She helps me a lot mm -hmm. in the conferences and just a lot of the things that I used to do. She does sure. the missions trips now, and sometimes it's a little hard not to be a little jealous when she <laughs> gets to go and I can't. But... I get over it real quick because mm -hmm. I remember jet lag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the day will come when she won't be able to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people always ask, well, what's going to happen to the ministry when you're no longer here? We have got a longevity plan. We, this ministry is not going to stop. We're mm -hmm. going to keep my teaching on, 
You know, I mean, Dave listened to one guy on the radio for 20 years and didn't know he was dead. Oh, my goodness. And so I can I can stay on all these different Mm -hmm. media outlets. The teaching doesn't get old just Mm -hmm. because. Right, the words the same. You do, yeah. and we're we're just not going to tell anybody when it happens, yeah. and just keep. Yeah, just, you know, <laughs> just no that, one will know. Never know. Put that video on and <laughs> keep it going <laughs> until someday they say, "Man, that's she not re- true." I want to make that clear. Yeah. We will not do that. She needs to update her dress. <laughs> but it doesn't have to stop, yeah. and we're going to do just as much in missions, probably more, because mm-hmm. it will become. You know, maybe even more so a missions organization. And uh, God can do anything that He wants to do. It is really helpful to hear such practical, real life advice from someone who has lived through a lot. Joyce said it well. She said, God is going to do what He wants to do. So if we can get into that plan with Him, we'll realize how true that is and how much better our life can be when we don't fight back quite so much. Are you like me? And probably Joyce too. We, we can be fighters and sometimes we need to learn to fight for the right things, those things that God really wants us to do. And it's easy to get sidetracked into some of those other things. So we are just so blessed to get to be a part of what he's doing around the world. And what he's doing in your life right now, you could be amazed by it. You see, you can be a part of it too, all without leaving the comfort of your home. And if you would like to do something special for Joyce's birthday, something that would really mean a lot to her, there would be nothing more important to her than to be able to help more people. And we can I'll do that together through your special gift today. If you would like to give anything at all that would go to our missions outreaches all around the world, I think you'll be amazed by what God can do. And when you do that, you are a part of so many things. Your missions gift can help feed. It can help provide water, education. It can go into our Project Girl program. It can do so many things. And you're a part of all of it when you give that special gift to make a difference where it's needed most. Now, whatever age you are, know that God can do big things through you. And we appreciate you so much. Have you been looking for a 365 day devotional? Well, look no further than the promises for your everyday life devotional from Joyce Meyer. There's a focus verse for all 365 days of the year, along with a prayer starter. Get your copy of Promises for Your Everyday Life devotional at joycemeyer.org 365 Devo. We have an exciting YouTube offer that's specially designed to help you spend quality time with your kids and nurture their growth with God, the incredible power of God's Word, and Best Day Ever, two remarkable books crafted to inspire kids as they embark on a faith-filled exploration and discover the wonders of God's love. Unleash the power of faith and create unforgettable moments with your kids. Go to joycemeyer.org slash kidsdevo and grab this limited time offer today. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks. And the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to joycemeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace. The mind actually is the battlefield. That's where we win or lose the war with Satan. He said all he gets to say. 
<laughs> he says the yes, the the is mine. <laughs> you start asking God to heal you and he will restore. He's the God of all comfort and I am so grateful that I know how to call on God.